Morning everyone, welcome to our video this week. I just wanted to show you something. This morning when I was getting the cows in for milking, there was quite a frenzied, they're very frenzied in this area here. And I couldn't work out what they were doing. But it turns out they were trying to get at the hay. We do hay tests periodically and usually it's when we have a spike in the milk career and we want to bring it down as quickly as possible but it's happened suddenly so we haven't been able to change anything else fundamentally and so we'll throw in a little bit of hay just to see if the cows like it so back in bloat season we put hay in front of them and they were frenzied they absolutely ate it preferentially and about a month or so ago when we got our first lot of rain after the dry spell we had a milk urea spike so I went straight out there with hay and just to gauge whether they were interested yes or no and they were so pissed off with me because they were expecting silage and they absolutely didn't want hay and it was good good quality second cut hay but they just didn't want it and then yeah when I seen this big mess here um, it seems like this is the hot ticket item last night and I did put a fence here although I didn't put power on it but you know they had to really want it to test if it was electric or not. Urea has spiked up to 43 which that's well beyond where I'm comfortable having it. Generally we sit around the 26. This year we've been a little bit higher than usual but we've been sitting quite steadily with no major problems at 26, 27 and that's been very very stable and yeah you see that spike it goes to 43. Now I can't pinpoint causation on a lot of things but there seems to be a strong relationship between when we get those spikes and when we get a little health problem pop up in a cow. So it might be a cow with mastitis, it might be a cow that goes off her feed. Um, I would even, I have no way of proving it, but I would even worry a little bit that you could get some miscarriages and that kind of thing. You couldn't rule it out at this time of the year, the cows are heavily pregnant. Um, this is the time of the year where you might start getting a, a, a slip. We call it a slip. There's a lot more grass and it's it's more palatable than it was three weeks ago so we've dropped from two bales a day down to one bale um, which is exciting to be saving a bale of silage because we've fed out a fair amount of silage in the last couple of months so any opportunity that we can take to actually save some silage is an advantage but i've just got to go up the silo this morning to see actually how much in shed feeding is left in the silo we've been flying through it a lot faster than what we'd anticipated generally we put the palm kernel in that steep sided silo there and we've ran out of palm kernel so <laughs> I'll be careful don't worry I don't know if you can see from that kind of distance with, with our camera 
but he's actually got boots on. It's been probably our most frequently asked question, but that little boy down there, he's got boots on this morning. I don't know why, and I don't know for how long they'll stay there. We didn't used to feed palm kernel, but when the price of in-shed feeding got out of control, we started adding palm kernel in just to bring the cost of the blend down a little bit. And at the time, we didn't see anything detrimental about doing that. So we continued with that. And yeah, we probably, maybe 40% of our blend is palm kernel throughout the year. Since we've dropped the palm kernel out, those cows have started eating the, the mix. There's still, I think there's about six or seven that weren't eating their mix, and now there's only two that's not eating it. Um, nothing else is, has really changed. Uh, so we had the wheat bran in here. That looks to have run out. We're just getting soy hulls at the moment. Our last two testers on the 12th of May, and so we'll milk twice a day as hard as possible until then, and kind of assess what our feed situation is like after that herd test and then it really becomes a question of are we better to get a little bit more in shed feeding and just go hard into the end of May or once this is finished it's finished and I guess it depends on what is available and at what price. To get another 12 tonnes to finish out the season would probably be in the vicinity of five, five and a half thousand dollars so it's not an insignificant piece of coin but where is he? So that's the kahikatea seed. I've never actually looked at it before. Oh. M maybe the Tui's eating those berries. Did you see that those cows practically ambushed me this morning? I, I saw that they, they were eating the hay, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know how aggressive they were for it. Well, they... <gasps> They completely ambushed the tractor. So hang on a minute. You're you're covered in blood because Adam put his finger in your nose and it started bleeding. Oh. No. Covered in blood. My plan is to feed half a bale of silage and half a bale of hay and milking. You know, why they're going nuts for hay like that, I'll just keep putting it in front of them. And then we've probably, in the next few days, we'll decide what the story is with the inshed feeding. I estimate that we've got about a third of a silo left in there. Cows have dropped 0.1 kilo of milk solids each since the wheat bran pellets ran out a few days ago. We paid $475 per tonne landed and I doubt we would be able to buy them now for the same price. If we were to get another load this season, at that price the milk response over feed costs works out at only $7.62 per day for the entire herd. That is within the margin of error and because we are so late in the lactation, the milk response would likely decrease. We have decided not to buy any more in-shed feed this season. Once the soy hulls in the silo are finished, that's the end of that. I'm just locking the cows in after our night milking. And I shot down here about 15 minutes ago to feed out half a bale of silage and half a bale of hay. So I was very curious to see what they preferred to eat first. And it's a bit of a mixed bag. So some of them are eating the hay and some of them are eating the silage. And we've got a beautiful sunset tonight. As winter draws nearer, we are gradually extending our grazing rotation and currently sitting on a 40-day round. 
As the quantity and palatability of the grass increases, we will extend that further. This is heavy frost country in the winter months, so we need to build up to a 100 day round by the 1st of June. 